Hi there, so today I'd like to go over uh, chapter 13 from Wolfson, just the first two sections, 13.1 and 13.2. And so the two sections are uh, general periodic oscillations. We'll just talk about that briefly. And then the special case, which is the main uh, focus of today, is simple harmonic motion. And if you look at the uh, quote up above, it says, if you displace a, a system from stable equilibrium, like that little marble, it says here the ball is in stable equilibrium. If you displace it a bit, um, then forces tend to restore that equilibrium. But the system, since it gets in motion, often overshoots its equilibrium and then gets pulled back and it'll oscillate back and forth. Okay? And that's what we're going to talk about this whole chapter. So let's get started. Okay, so some oscillations are not sinusoidal. So just anything that oscillates um, can have a period. So here is a, a position of an object which looks like a sawtooth pattern. It goes up quickly and then turns around and goes down slowly, up quickly, down more slowly. But it repeats. Every cycle takes a time, capital T. There's also, so that's called sawtooth. There's a square function where it stays, it stops for a while, and then goes to another position, stops for a while, goes to another position, stops for a while. But once again, this has a cycle uh, time or period, uh, capital T. It could be a very complicated uh, motion that's happening, but if it repeats, so that's exactly the same motion, uh, every time you go a period T later, then that's oscillatory motion. And once you have a period, you can define a frequency. So for any kind of oscillation, the time to complete one full cycle is called the period. The frequency is the number of cycles per second. You just take frequency is one divided by uh, the period. Also, the period is one over the frequency, where the frequency is measured in cycles per second, also called hertz. So one cycle per second is one hertz. We may also, it turns out, it's going to be helpful if we define an angular frequency, omega, in units of radians per second. All you do is you just take the f and multiply by 2 pi. So we say that one cycle is 2 pi radians. Well, the angular frequency is uh, 2 pi divided by the period, or 2 pi times the frequency in hertz. So it's just two different ways of uh, specifying an oscillation frequency. You can call it in hertz or you can talk about it in radians per second where you just mean uh, 2 pi times the, the frequency in hertz. So next is the spring mass system. This is the one that does have sinusoidal oscillations and we're going to sp spend the rest of the chap or today's video talking about this system. So you have a mass uh, and it's on a frictionless surface and it's attached to a spring and the other end of the spring is attached to a fixed wall. The equilibrium position of the mass is when x equals 0. If you move the mass to the right, a distance x, then the spring exerts a horizontal force on the mass uh, uh, equal to negative k times x, where k is the spring constant of the spring. So if that's the only horizontal force, then by Newton's second law, the x component of the force is the mass times the x component of the acceleration. You can combine these two equations, f net equals f spring, so that you solve for the acceleration is negative k over m times x. Now, that looks simple enough, but the problem here is that as x is changing, so is the acceleration. So this is not constant acceleration. So we can't use equations of constant acceleration to solve this. Uh, and one way I guess we could solve this is we could try to do things approximately. Uh, and so I think I'm going to go to an Excel spreadsheet and see if we can uh, try to give an approximate look for what the solution should look like. Okay, so this is Microsoft Excel. I'm not sure if you've ever used this before, but it's pretty simple. The basic idea is it's a whole bunch of these boxes, and they are arranged in a giant grid and uh, so the columns in this grid are labeled by letters and the rows in the grid are labeled by uh, numbers and the boxes themselves are called cells so right now I'm on like cell uh, B5 you go to cell D7 first cell is A1 and in a cell you can either put words or you can put numbers so there's one with words there's one with words um, 
And for numbers, there can be either input numbers or calculated numbers are the two kinds. So I have put pink for input numbers. Input numbers are just numbers you type. So what I want to do is think about that mass and the spring. So I have to set as one of the constants, the spring constant. So let's just call the spring constant one, just make things easy. And we'll call the mass of the, of the mass one kilogram. Okay, so those are input. And I am going to now compute where the thing is. So the time, I'm just gonna input, the initial time is zero seconds. Okay, the initial position, what I want to do is take the mass out to x equals 1 meter and release it from rest. So the initial position is x equals 1 meter, and then the initial velocity is 0, released from rest. Okay, and then we can actually, this cell E4 here is going to be the first one where we actually do a computation. So I'm going to type equals, because we're going to calculate something based on the other cells. Uh, it's negative kx divided by m, so it's negative 1 times k, the spring constant. Now that's up in cell E1, and I'm going to put dollar signs around the E. You can ignore the dollar signs if you want. Uh, it just means that it's always in um, cell E1, and if I do a copy and paste, which I'm going to do pretty soon, it'll, it won't change that. Uh, and then times uh, x x is uh, in the uh, cell C4, and that one's going to change as I copy and paste. I'm just going to leave out the dollar signs there, C4, that's x, and then divide by the mass. And the mass is in uh, G1, and it's always in G1, so put the dollar signs around the G. So the acceleration is negative 1 meter per second squared if the uh, mass is out at x equals 1. Okay, fine. So next, I want to see what's going to happen next. So I'm going to introduce a time step. Um, I'm just going to step up, let's say, 0.1 seconds, for example. So this will be, this next time in row 5 will be a time equal to uh, B4, which is the time what it was just before. That's a funny pun. Um, plus, uh, this time step, which is in C1. So I'm going to put dollar signs around the C, whoop, capital C, 1. So it's going to take 0 plus 0 0.1, gives me 0 0.1 seconds. And what I can do now, if I want to, is I can do con uh, copy this cell, and I can paste it down into these cells. Uh, paste, whoop, just paste. And what it does is it just keeps on adding to the, uh, each cell is the thing that it was bef above plus this time step. So that takes me up to one second. So you see what I'm going to do here? As for x, see now I've got a problem. Um, x, I need to know what the velocity is to know how x changes. And look at this equation that I've just typed out in word form in A5. x5 for this row is going to be what it was before, x4 plus some little change. So what I'm going to do is approximate the average velocity as just being whatever it was before. Since I know what it was at time 4, I'm just going to take time 4 and then multiply it times my time step dt. So that's my strategy. I've just got x equals c4 is what it was just before, plus open bracket uh, d4 is what the velocity was before, multiplied times that time step in C1. Makes sense. And that'll update my position. It's still one meter. Oh, it's one meter because the velocity before was zero. It started at rest. So I just haven't had time to get it going yet. And then as for the new velocity, V5, I'm going to use this equation. Same, same basic idea. It's the previous velocity plus the previous acceleration times the time step, because the acceleration is that uh, time step. So it's going to be equal to um, what it was before, which is d4 plus the uh, previous acceleration, which was e4, times this time step, which is c dollar sign 1. And that'll update my velocity. And that one has changed a little bit. So since it was accelerating minus 1 meters per second squared, then uh, 0.1 seconds later, 
its velocity will have decreased a little bit. And as for acceleration, I'm just going to co uh, copy that equation down to here to, um, oh, position hasn't moved, so the acceleration is still minus 1. But it's always going to be just negative k times x over m. So that's it. And now I can, if I want to copy all three of these cells, I can do copy and paste them all the way down here and see what happens. Okay, so what happens is that uh, eventually the position does start changing, it's decreasing, and as it's decreasing, the acceleration is also decreasing, and velocity is, is, uh, is actually getting more and more negative. So, and what I can do is I can then sort of plot that. So there is mass in the spring. You can see the position now versus uh, time. Yeah, time on this axis, and I've gone up to one second. So that's what it's looking like, is that it started off with zero velocity, and then it starts accelerating as it's going down towards zero. So I can just keep going with more and more seconds. Let's, uh, let's go for So if I just add more time steps all the way up to almost six seconds, it looks like this. Now, this is actually overshooting where it started originally, and that's because my time step is kind of large, uh, 0.1 seconds, and so it's, it's not quite accurate. So what I actually want to do now is go back up here and change my time step. Remember we were always using the previous velocity to update the position? That's not quite right, but we can make it better by just changing the time step to 0.01. Uh, and then what happens is you get a much more accurate um, uh, position versus time graph. The graph looks like this. It starts at x equals 1. It goes down. Uh, it overshoots equilibrium, which is x equals 0. It gets down to minus 1 at time equals 3.14 seconds. And then at about 6.28 seconds, it's back up to where it started. Okay. So do you recognize this curve? Well, you might uh, recognize it as being cosine. It looks just like a cosine curve, except it doesn't go from 0 to 360. It goes from 0 to 6.28. So remember, the best way to measure angles in physics is radians instead of degrees. And in fact, if you think about cosine in terms of radians, the cosine of pi is negative 1. Cosine of 0 is 1, of course. Cosine of 2 pi is back up to 1 again. So this is actually exactly the cosine curve, with time measured in seconds here as being radians, and position here is in meters as being the cosine. So remarkably, we can solve this by just writing down cosine. So just to recap here, we've got uh, this simple harmonic motion, which is mass on a spring, and the solution is cosine. Well, where have we seen cosine before? Well, there is a right angle triangle. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So my question is, and I actually don't know the answer to this, why are these the same? So in fact, I've got this uh, $5 bill. And I am offering to anybody out there in the world who can explain this conundrum to me, this $5. I've been thinking about it since probably 1989. I don't know why this triangle should be telling this mass what to do. Okay, I don't get why those are the same function. I know that it works, and mathematically, we're going to show next that cosine is a perfectly valid solution. And I've asked mathematicians, and they say it's a trial solution. I'm not sure why. So I'm going to post it right back here. So that's where the $5 sits. Uh, please feel free to come by MP121B. That's my office. Tell me why those things work, and you'll get the $5. So I'll do the math really quickly here. Uh, the force on the mass is m times ax equals negative kx. So the acceleration, which is d squared x by dt squared, is negative k over m times x. We need to solve this differential equation. The mathematicians give us a trial solution. A, x equals a times cos, cosine of omega t plus phi, where these a, omega, and phi are some constants. I think it's helpful to look at the units of all these. Uh, X is in meters. A is the amplitude, also in meters. Omega is what we call the angular frequency. 
Uh, so that's going to be in radians per second because we need the argument of cosine to be in radians uh, and t is in seconds. And then phi, which is called the phase constant, uh, is in radians. And then two variables there are x and t. So let's differentiate our trial solution. I don't know if you know, the de derivative of cos is negative sine, and the omega comes out in front there. So, and we can differentiate again. The derivative of sine is positive cos, but we still have the negative sine from before. So it's negative a omega squared times cosine of the same argument. This can be written as negative omega squared times x. So d squared x by dt squared equals negative omega squared times x. We've solved it, as long as this negative omega squared is negative k over m, okay? So we set uh, that omega is equal to square root of k over m is the angular frequency of the oscillation of a mass uh, attached to a spring. And the other two constants, a and, o and phi, were determined, are determined by the initial conditions uh, of the motion. So here's a nicer plot of it. It's called simple harmonic motion. Uh, anytime you've got something like Hooke's law, then uh, you're going to have this uh, cosine curve. So uh, A turns out to be the maximum and minimum displacement. So I guess the, the total distance that travels is 2A. Uh, it oscillates around x equals uh, 0 up to x equals plus A, uh, down to x equals minus A. Um, You've got this omega times t equals pi when you get to uh, t equals half a period, or 2 pi when t equals a whole period. So the angular frequency, which is k over m, is also equal uh, to 2 pi times the frequency. Right. So there's a few equations here. The period is 2 pi times mass over the square root of mass over uh, spring constant. Uh, and the phase, that uh, little phi angle, describes the starting time of the displacement versus time curve. So if it doesn't start at rest at the maximum position, like if it starts with some velocity, then you can just change the phi and still use this cosine equation. So for example, if something starts at x equals 0 with a positive velocity, you can set uh, phi equals negative pi over 2, and you, you end up with something that looks a lot like a sine curve. So this pi just determines the, the starting position. Okay, so if you want to look at velocity and acceleration, remember the velocity is the slope of the position curve. So if you start off at uh, zero velocity, okay, so the slope right here is zero, then that looks like zero. As it gets more negative, it dips down. Uh, as it passes through equilibrium, that's when it's at its maximum negative velocity at pi over two. And then it comes, it slows down till it gets to zero again at uh, x equals negative a, and then back up here, uh, passes equilibrium. Whenever the mass passes the equilibrium position is actually when it's moving the fastest. Okay. Uh, we can look at the acceleration curve. Remember, acceleration is dv by dt, so the slope of the of the velocity curve. It starts off with its maximum negative acceleration. Uh, when x equals zero, then the acceleration gets less and less and less. When the mass passes through equilibrium, that's when the acceleration is zero, right? Because the force is zero. And then as it goes to positive x, uh, or sorry, negative x, you get positive force. So this is just an upside down cosine curve as the acceleration um, is equal to negative uh, km, uh, kx over m. So here we actually have an animation uh, that I found on the web showing a vertical oscillator, uh, so it's actually y versus t now, but it's the exact same uh, cosine function as before. So if we stop it here, so we start with uh, the velocity being about zero and it being released from maximum displacement. This is where it has maximum uh, negative acceleration. As we step forward, the mass goes down. Uh, it speeds up, speeds up, till it passes through its equilibrium position. That's when it's going the fastest. Then it overshoots equilibrium. That's when the acceleration now be, um, becomes upward, so it's slowing down now. Keeps slowing down, keeps slowing down, till it finally stops, gets to its maximum uh, negative position. Then it starts coming back up again as it's going up. It's accelerating till it gets to its fastest speed. That's when it passes through equilibrium, so it overshoots again until it goes back up to where it started from and then repeats that motion. 
And that's it. Uh, that's what you need to know about uh, simple harmonic motion. I will see you in class.